You ask and I'll answer. <clears throat> Today is November 18th on Friday. My name is Talia Geely Kesselman. I am interviewing my grandmother, whose name is Aviva. Please tell us your full name. Aviva Renee Kesselman. You have a nickname? No, it's Aviva. <laughs> when were you born? I was born April 29th, 1941. Where were you born? I was born in Stamford, Connecticut. Who was the first person in your family to come to America and why? Uh, my father was the first person to come to America, and he, he was the last of the eight children in his family to come from Poland to America. My mother came to America after him. She, her family migrated from Poland to Canada, and when she married my father, she migrated and became a, an American citizen. Who were your parents? Who were, who were they? My father actually studied to be a rabbi in Poland, but he never practiced as a rabbi. And when he came to the United States, he worked for his brothers, the Brown brothers who had a grocery store in Stamford, Connecticut. He didn't like having to work for his brothers, so he went out on his own. He eventually had a magnesium plant and a turkey farm with a partner. And he thought the turkeys were so stupid, he said to his partner, you keep the turkey farm, I'll take the magnesium plant. So that's what he did. He had a magnesium plant. <laughs> what were their names? Uh, oh. My father's name was Mendel Milton Brown, and my mother's name was Ida Ida Sharrow, and it became Brown. And they, my father's name became Brown when he migrated to the United States. His family went from Belrachowski to Brown. When the immigration officer saw the name, they said Brown. So that's how I ended up with the last name of Brown before I got married. How did your parents earn a living? Oh, my dad had the magnesium plant. And that's how he earned a living. When I was growing up, I used to play there. And when I was in high school, I actually worked there during the summers. Describe how you celebrated Jewish holidays when you were a child. Did you celebrate oh. any other holidays? Uh, no, we just celebrated the Jewish holidays. And we celebrated them. My father would read Hebrew, like for Passover. He read it and uh, my mother would say, Mendel, Mendel, read in English. But my sister and I would say, no, no, daddy, read in Hebrew because he read it so fast, it was like a train. We said it would go, dr, dr, dr. he read very, very quickly in Hebrew. And we liked to get through the services quickly. <laughs> Has anything changed um, from celebrating holidays as a child to as an adult? Uh, well, as a child, we got together with family and friends at my parents' house, and my mother always did a lot of cooking and preparation. And as an adult, we still get together with family and friends for all the holidays. Unfortunately, this year we're missing out because we are in Florida and you're in Connecticut. But we really miss it because that's the tradition that we have is getting together with our whole family. Did you have a bar bar mitzvah? I did have a bat mitzvah, but I was 53 years old. I had one when I was in Israel on a young leadership mission, we went to Masada, and anyone who had not had a bar bat mitzvah could have one there. But I had a real one at 53 because I hadn't had one growing up. Was there any reason? 
Yes. Uh, I'd actually started out, I worked at our temple. And I had told the rabbi I wanted to learn to say the Yisker prayer for my parents who had died. And he said, you should join the bat mitzvah class we have. You'll learn the Hebrew and you can have a bat mitzvah. So that's how I joined the class and I had a bat mitzvah. There were eight of us at the time. When you were a teenager, did you have any other spe special celebrations because you uh, didn't have a bat mitzvah? I don't, well, I had confirmation. Uh, at the time, I belonged to a conservative temple, and girls didn't usually have a bat mitzvah. So we had confirmation class, and I was confirmed at the temple. What is confirmation class? What is comfort? It's when you're in high school, you continue your studies uh, past 13, the whole play, even the boys continued on. And we continued our studies. And I think I was a junior in high school when we had our confirmation class. And Where did you go to school? I started out at a two room schoughouse. And outside of Poughkeepsie, New York, we lived on a farm, and occasionally our caretaker would take the hay wagon with the, our horse and take us to school, and then he'd ride the other children around in the hay wagon just for fun. When I was in fourth grade, they built a regular schoolhouse, and it was no longer a two-room schoolhouse, so it was a, a regular public school that uh, had grades only one through six, and then there was a junior high. When I was in the two-room schoolhouse, it was one through eight. Was there any special story from fifth or sixth grade? Was there any special what, honey? School story from sixth grade. Uh, from sixth grade? Um, no, in seventh grade, there was a special story. I what was... was I, I didn't know that I was dyslexic. I had a terrible time reading. And when I learned to read, what I did is I memorized the vocabulary in the back of the book. And when I'd come to a word I didn't remember, I'd go in my mind through the vocabulary list until I could picture it, and then I would say it. So when I was got to middle school, I still had difficulty reading. Nobody seemed to understand about dyslexia at the time. And one time, the seventh grade teacher had another teacher come to the door of our classroom, and she pointed at me, and she said, that one, that one over there can't read as well as a fourth grader. I was so embarrassed, and I decided from then on I would never, ever fail, no matter how hard I had to work. And then Tell us about... You obviously stirred the family, otherwise I wouldn't be here. So tell us about what it was like um, starting a family and getting married and stuff. Uh, well, I went to Penn State, and that's where I met your grandfather. And right after school, we got married. Initially, we were going to go to both go to graduate school there. But Grandpa got into law school, so I went to work for the National Cancer Institute, and he went to law school in Washington, D.C. at GW. And after he graduated, he got a job at Xerox in Rochester, New York. So we moved to Rochester, New York. And that's where we started our family. That's where Tammy, your Aunt Tammy, and your Uncle Brian were born. Then we were transferred to Stanford, Connecticut. And that's where your daddy was born. Did anyone in your family search, um, no, did anyone in your family serve in the military? Um, I know I had a cousin who was in the Navy. Chaim. Uh, and I had, my uncle Chaim actually was in His Majesty's Jewish Forces during World War II. From England. Uh, he was uh, through England and he served in Africa and, uh, 
he served the military well. And you might want to know that my mother, when she was living in Canada, that she migrated to Canada when she was uh, in her early teens, and she left and went to Israel to help start a kibbutzim to Palestine. She started helped start Eino Shafet and Mishmara Amit, two different kibbutzim. And then for a while, she worked for Dove Joseph, who became the first minister of the treasury, I believe, for the state, Justice. new state of Israel. Uh, the Ministry of Justice is mm -hmm. the Ministry of Justice. And uh, eventually her father, who was, they had migrated to Canada, he said, it is time for you to come home. So she was a stowaway on a boat to get to Canada because she didn't have enough money to get a boat fare. And she went back to Canada to be with her family. Um, what do you like to do in your free time? Uh, I loved when you, you were little, I loved helping to raise all my grandchildren. I would have them one day a week, and that was the most special day of the week. Uh, I love being with my family, and I thoroughly enjoy sewing, and I'm just finishing up some of the 14 gifts that I make for our grandchildren and great nieces, grand nieces and nephews every year. And I love cooking, especially with my grandchildren and baking. Um, what inventions have amazed you most during your lifetime? Like what have you felt changed most during from the time you were a kid to the time you were an adult? Actually, the amazing power of the computer. Uh, the computer and computer chips in anything and everything the, that are in the, the phones, the cell phones, and just in the computer. Right now, I have a brand new sewing machine that hooks up to my computer, and it is amazing. Is there anything else you would like to say? Uh, just you. that it is a pleasure to be with you. I love you to bits. You look terrific. And uh, I look forward to when we can get back to Connecticut and give you hugs and squeezes. Or Florida. Thank you. You can come to Florida and visit me. <laughs> I don't know because how we'll get a plane there. Uh, well, you, I think you're coming in February. So I All might right. get to see you in February. That will be wonderful. That's what I'm looking forward to. Thank and of you. Course, the rest of your family, too. Thank you so much.